Military murder is an independent project and is not endorsed by the Department of Defense or any military component. The views expressed are those of the host. The content of this podcast is not meant to be legal or medical advice. Warning, this episode contains graphic details of murder and is not suitable for young listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome back, True Crime Army. I am your host, Margot, and this is Military Murder, a show where I focus on crimes committed by military members and veterans. But don't worry, you don't have to know anything about the military to listen, I promise. You just have to be a true crime enthusiast. And if that's you, welcome home. Hello, my loves. Can I just say how much I love you all? Seriously, I mean it. Y'all have been a part of my life for the last three years. And to be honest, I'm not the same person who started this show back then. In all honesty, the military true crime arena is definitely not the same that it was three years ago. Imagine this, three years ago, Vanessa Guillen and Enrique Roman Martinez were still alive. Who knew that within six months of starting this show, these two military members would make national headlines and spark an outrage? Well, listen, today's case is sure to make you feel outrage as well. The math doesn't add up and it smells real foul. Trigger warning, this case does mention suicide, although the family denies this narrative, but I know that the mention of suicide can be triggering, so listener discretion is advised. Join me today as I bring you the story of the suspicious death of Denisha Montgomery Smith. Now, let's dig in. We start tonight with a family demanding answers after their daughter, a military police officer, died while serving overseas. This is Denisha Montgomery, just 27 years old, her entire future ahead of her, a daughter, a wife, a mother, serving her country and working hard to support her kids back home. The Army calls Denisha's death a suicide, and they are investigating, but her family believes something far more sinister happened, and someone is not telling the truth. My main source for this episode was Denisha's sister herself, Army Sergeant Brooklyn Price. I also relied on an Army press release, articles in Stars and Stripes, News Nation Now, WDRB, and The Daily Beast. I initially discovered this case from a Facebook post, so I would be remiss if I didn't put that up front. Denisha Montgomery Smith was born to parents Heather Clark and Rodney Montgomery Jr. She was born on May 31, 1995, in Elizabethtown, Kentucky. While her parents' relationship did not work out, when Denisha was four years old, her sister and best friend, Brooklyn, was born to her mother, Heather. Denisha's mom worked a lot to sustain her life as a single mom to two daughters. And with that, Denisha took her role as big sister very serious. When Denisha was about six years old, her father, Rodney, he welcomed another daughter. Her name was Jada. And so it basically became three sisters, Denisha, Brooklyn, and Jada. Denisha was the glue for all three girls. In speaking to Brooklyn to get information about Denisha, she explained that Denisha was more than a big sister. She was really her second mom. She was always taking care of her and defending her when necessary. Brooke shared a very special story with me. She said that when she was younger, she had what many believed was a speech impediment. Brooke was close to five years old when she began talking, which caused some social issues for Brooke. But Denisha, always the amazing big sister, seemed to understand what Brooke needed before she spoke a single word. Denisha was described to me as a busybody. She was always out of the house playing softball, working, anything to keep busy. When Denisha left the house after graduating from high school, she began a relationship with a man named Joshua Smith. Denisha and Joshua went on to have three little boys together in the following years. So Brooklyn described that her and her sister came from a low-income household, and they always wanted something more for their lives. When Brooklyn decided to join the Army in 2018, everyone was super supportive. She joined the Army to make a better life for herself. Sometime in 2020, after Brooklyn had been in the Army for a couple of years, Denisha began asking Brooke questions about the Army. She wanted to know things like, does the military cover health insurance for the entire family? And Brooke was like, yeah, the benefits of being in the military are pretty cool. But listen, by no means was Brooklyn trying to recruit her sister. In fact, Brooklyn wasn't sure Denisha was really military material because Denisha was very headstrong and didn't like to be told what to do. The 2020 conversation about the Army was kind of brief, 
But then, a few weeks later, Denisha told Brooke that she was joining the army. So it appeared that the sisters would be more than sisters by blood. Now they would be sisters in arms. And that was very special to be able to share that part of their lives with each other. So by this point in the story where Denisha is about to join the military, Denisha has been dating Josh for many years. Brooklyn is dating her boyfriend and Brooklyn's boyfriend is intending to propose to her. When unbeknownst to him, Josh pops the question to Denisha. So Brooklyn's boyfriend decided that he didn't want to rain on Denisha and Josh's parade. So he decided to wait for his proposal. At Denisha and Josh's wedding, when Denisha did the traditional throwing her bouquet, who caught it but Brooklyn? Of course, Brooklyn had no idea that her boyfriend intended to propose, but it was a very sweet coincidence. So Brooklyn ended up keeping the bouquet and two weeks later, her boyfriend proposed. So let's fast forward after Denisha's wedding when Denisha joins the military in January of 2021. By then, Denisha and her husband, as I already mentioned, had three kids. Before Denisha left for boot camp, her and Brooklyn spoke about Brooklyn's upcoming marriage. Brooklyn wanted to wait until Denisha was done with all her training to have a big wedding, and that all sounded good and dandy. So while Denisha was doing her military boot camp thing, Josh and the kids were back home in Kentucky. Denisha was able to visit her family between boot camp and AIT, and then she was off to her initial training to become a military police officer. When Denisha was assigned to Fort Stewart in Georgia, Josh and the kids were finally able to join her and they moved on to a house on base. But as often goes with the military, almost as soon as Denisha arrived at Fort Stewart, her unit was getting ready to go on a nine-month tour to Germany. Denisha contacted her mom and told her about the deployment, and Denisha's mom was crying. She didn't want her baby to deploy. Now, this is when everything in the Ukraine was popping off, so she was really just worried for Denisha's safety. When Denisha told Brooke that she was deploying, Brooke was initially concerned as well. But when Denisha revealed that she would be going to Germany, Brooklyn was like, girl, you will be fine. I've been to Germany. It's fun. You get to have amazing beer. Time will fly and you'll be back in no time. These are words that Brooklyn really believed at the time. But sadly, things turned out differently. I wanted to learn more about Denisha's experience in the military, but as it turns out, most of her military career, which consisted of 20 months, was spent mostly in some form of training or moving, so I couldn't really get a sense of that aspect of Denisha's life. What Brooke told me, though, was that when Denisha found out that she was going to be a military police officer, Denisha was ecstatic because it all lined up with her life goals. Denisha wanted to do one tour in the military, and then she wanted to become a civilian police officer. But ultimately, she wanted to be a forensic scientist. So when Denisha had the opportunity to go to Germany, the vibe that she gave off was that she was happy. When Denisha arrived in Germany, she spoke often to her husband, her parents and her sisters, and there were never any pressing issues. There was one thing that happened when Denisha was out at a local bar with her roommate, who I do not intend to name. However, the event didn't involve Denisha so much as it involved the roommate. But that's all I'll say about that. So Denisha's vibe changed on July 19th, 2022. On this date, Denisha and a group of other soldiers went to a local amusement park. Now, I say amusement park. There's some reports that call it a water park. I think it's a combination of both. But for this, I'm going to just call it an amusement park. So on July 19th, she goes to an amusement park with a bunch of other soldiers. They spend the day going on rides and drinking. But later, on the car ride back to the military installation, things took a scary turn. At the time, Denisha was eight months into her tour in Germany with the 139th Military Police Company in Wiesbaden when she made a startling video call to her family after the amusement park trip. This video call is available online through Brooklyn's TikTok and also through some media reports, but I'm going to play it here for you. I'm not going to play the entire thing, but I'm going to play the most important parts of it. I will say before starting it that Denisha used to communicate back home via WhatsApp. On this particular day, she video called her husband, Josh, and then she added her mother to the video call as well. Now, the reason why you will hear additional voices is that Denisha's mom was with a ton of other family members and Denisha's mom was using another phone to speak to Brooklyn. So there's a lot going on here. The person that you won't hear speaking is Josh, because for some reason I can see him talking, but you can't hear his voice. So I'm just going to fast forward through uh, some of those portions. <laughs> Did this happen last night? Yeah, it, it happened like 
happened about two hours ago. It happened two hours ago. Josh. Josh, screen record this. Look. Look at this. Look. Wow. I have more and more that keep popping up. Where's my mom? He uh, Heather, Nisha wants you. I love y'all too. I just want to come home. I'll call you. Yeah, hold on. Here's Beth. So your mom? Brooklyn. Uh, Brooklyn. Hi, honey. Mom. Yeah. Mom, I want to come home. Jada, be ready. She knows. I told her. Well, they was they was covering my mouth like this. They was doing that to me in the in the car. Uh, I kept telling them, I was like, I can't breathe. I was like, I can't breathe. I was gasping for air. I was like, I can't. Bro, I ain't never been so scared in my life. I legit, I thought I was going to die in the car, bro. All right, honey. So tomorrow, what's supposed to happen? I'm going to talk to CID tomorrow. And what, tell them that you just want to get out or what? I'm I, I'm telling them that I don't want to be here no more. I'll do whatever I have to do, Mom. I'm coming. I can't be here no more. I don't trust them. I don't trust my leadership. I don't. I don't want to be here with none of them no more. Okay, honey. I don't know why they're mad at me. We was just. We was all. We all went to the water park, and we was all drinking. And I don't know why everyone's mad at me. I don't know why. But they was being mean to me in the car, so I was like, just let me out of the car. But they wouldn't let me out of the car. And then all this happened. <laughs> it was Frank's boyfriend's rental car. All right, honey. No, it's not him. It's her boyfriend from Stewart. He's here on leave. Hey, honey. Hey, mom. Hey, Jaden. I love you. Brookie's crying too. I know. I don't want to cry. I, I just want to come home. Look what Brooklyn. they did. This video is extremely disturbing. I know that you can't see what's happening because you're listening to me on audio. So I'm going to describe a few things. This episode was made possible in part by Honey Love. The reviews are in, and Honey Love came out on top for best wedding day shapewear. With wedding season upon us, this is the shapewear you've been waiting for. Whether you're a bride, a guest, or just looking for an everyday good fit, Honey Love is your go-to for all things shapewear. I know, I know. When you hear the word shapewear, you probably get an image in your head of not being able to breathe. But that's simply not the case when choosing Honey Love. Their best-selling item is the Super Power Short. And let me tell you, they are glorious. I recently fit into a red dress that I haven't been able to fit into in a long time. But when I put it on, I felt like something was missing. I slipped on my Honey Love Super Power shorts and voila, it held me in in all the right places and sculpted me in areas that needed a little help. And while wearing that red dress, I felt confident and simply blessed. And that's because the Super Power short is created with Honey Love's Signature X, which targets and sculpts your midsection without squeezing your natural curves because it's designed to work with your body, not against your body. And the bonus is that Honey Love made it simple to use the bathroom while wearing this piece, I know. It's made with 100% cotton gusset, so you can skip the extra undies and use their convenient opening, which makes it super easy for bathroom use. But comfort doesn't stop at shapewear at Honey Love. They also make comfortable bras, tanks, and leggings. This season, treat yourself to the best shapewear on the market and save 20% off at honeylove.com when you use my code MILITARYMAMA. That's 20% off at honeylove.com when you use my code MILITARYMAMA. Let me guess, you can spot a too-good-to-be-true health hack from a mile away. 
And that's good because nowadays, when it comes to your health, you should have a healthy dose of skepticism. Enter Ritual, a vitamin company that allows its users to discover all the sourcing, testing, and packaging details for every Ritual product. Earlier this year, I changed from using over-the-counter multivitamins to getting my multivitamin from Ritual. And what I love most about its Essential for Women 18 Plus vitamin is that I know exactly what is in it. So I'm not getting any of the fluff. My multivitamin comes packed with nine key nutrients in two daily capsules. And some of those nine key ingredients include vitamin D3, vitamin E, vitamin B12, magnesium, iron, folate, and omega-3 DHA, just to name a few. And after I pop the two capsules into my mouth on a daily basis, I am left with a minty taste in my mouth. No more chalky aftertaste. Rituals Essential for Women 18 Plus is one of the few women's multis that's USP verified, meaning what's on the label is what's in the formula. It's also soy-free, gluten-free, vegan-friendly, and formulated without GMOs. No more shady business when it comes to your vitamins. Rituals Essential for Women 18 Plus is a multivitamin that you can actually trust. And right now, Ritual is offering my listeners 10% off during your first three months. Visit ritual.com slash military10 to start Ritual or to add Essential for Women 18 Plus to your subscription today. In this video, you can see Denisha has visible bruising all over her body. And I'm not just talking about like light bruises or redness. One of Denisha's triceps is literally black and blue. There is a bruise and it's shaped like an oval and it takes up half of her upper arm. On the opposite side of her body, Denisha has a quarter sized bruise on the top of her shoulder and it has a visible puncture. Denisha is seen crying in the video. She's wiping her tears. So initially I thought her face was the color red from emotion, but Brooklyn shared with me that her face was actually swollen. I find it so powerful that Denisha in this moment of desperation had the wherewithal to ask her family to record this video. Now, if you're familiar with this case, which many of you probably are, then you're also familiar with the hashtag do what Denisha did, which basically means leave a digital footprint. So as the call continued, Denisha's father Rodney was on the phone with no kidding, the Red Cross. Basically, he was trying to make contact with his daughter via other means to ensure she was safe. Brooklyn shared with me that the Red Cross did reach out to Denisha directly but nothing ever came of it. During the video call, Denisha is adamant that she is going to report the physical assault the following day to the Criminal Investigation Division, CID. But I learned from Brooklyn that Denisha reported the assault to her first sergeant instead, and the first sergeant discouraged Denisha from reporting the assault. The first sergeant claiming that the fact that she defended herself would cause her to get charged if the case went any further. Stars and Stripes actually got their hands on the text messages that Denisha exchanged with her uncle where she shares this information on July 21st, two days after the amusement park incident. Denisha states in that text message, quote, They told me if I report an assault, I'll be charged with an assault too because I mushed the female and bit the male that was choking me. First sergeant here told me self-defense in the military isn't a thing shaking my head, end quote. So with that, Denisha didn't report it further up the chain because according to her family, Denisha was just eager to get out of Germany. And it turns out after she reported to her first sergeant, the unit removed Denisha's roommate from the room for approximately 48 hours. I guess it was kind of like a cooling down period because we would later learn that Denisha's female roommate was one of the alleged assailants in the car with Denisha on July 19th, 2022. After the assault, Denisha was skittish, of course, and she was fearful for her life. She told her family that she chose not to make an official report for fear that it would extend her tour in Germany. And at that point, she just wanted to get the hell out of Dodge. She wanted to go home. Denisha promised her family that she would make the formal report upon returning to Fort Stewart. So Brooklyn shared with me that after the assault, Denisha became very reserved and she wouldn't talk much about the assault. She seemed to be less vocal about things than before, and she was always looking over her shoulder when she was on the phone with them. Because remember, they were always FaceTiming or WhatsApping. On July 27th, Denisha messaged her uncle saying, quote, I'm sorry, I've just been depressed and didn't want to talk about it anymore. I decided not to say anything. I didn't want to end up getting in trouble too. 
I'm okay. My bruises are starting to go away. I've been keeping my head down, staying in my room, and going to work. When I get back to Stuart, I have another NCO who is going to get me in his squad so I don't have to directly deal with these people, end quote. She further stated, quote, but I'm okay. I love you so much and I appreciate all of your help, end quote. It was clear from her conversations with family that Denisha didn't feel safe. When Denisha failed to contact Brooke for her godson's first birthday, a.k.a. her nephew, Brooklyn reached out to Denisha and Denisha basically apologized for not getting back to her sooner. She told her she wanted to lay low until she got home. She hadn't been hanging out with others because she didn't trust anyone. At this point, Denisha still had about a month to return to the States, but she was so ready that she had packed her bags, taken a picture of it, and sent it to someone in her family. On August 9th, 2022, Denisha's mom, Heather, got a knock on the door. Almost at the same time, Denisha's father, Rodney, was getting a knock on his door. Heather and Rodney were almost simultaneously learning that Denisha had sadly passed away in Germany. Meanwhile, Josh, Denisha's husband, was at his home on Fort Stewart with the three boys, and he had no idea that his wife was dead. Then his phone rang, and it was Denisha's stepmom. She was hysterical on the phone. You see, she thought that Josh was aware that his wife was dead, but the army hadn't notified him yet. So Josh heard about Denisha's death from a family member, and it wouldn't be for another two hours that the official notification team would notify Josh at home, even though he was the only one who lived on a military installation. After learning about Denisha's death, Josh tried to play back the last time he spoke to her, which was just the night prior, a few hours earlier. Denisha spoke with Josh and her kids. Josh said everything seemed fine. Denisha was playing music, including her and Josh's wedding song. She was singing and dancing and having a good time in her room. Josh and Denisha stayed on the phone together until it was time for Denisha to go to sleep. And now Josh was trying to process the fact that Denisha was dead. She was never coming home. As everyone was being notified about Denisha, Brooklyn was making dinner for her husband and son when she saw a call from her mom. She was elbows deep in cooking, so she decided not to answer the phone. Then her husband's phone rang and Brooklyn saw that it was her mother. She didn't think anything about this, except when her husband answered the phone, the blood drained from his face as he turned gray. Brooklyn immediately knew something was wrong. And when she got on the phone and heard her mom sobbing, she knew. Brooklyn described this feeling as losing total control of herself. She fell to her knees and made an unnatural gut-wrenching cry that terrified her toddler, causing the little boy to begin to cry as well. But Brooklyn just sat there. She was so lost in the emotion that she couldn't even console her little baby. I first learned about Denisha's death from Facebook. Denisha's god sister posted on Facebook describing Denisha's TDY. The god sister said that Denisha was in Wiesbaden and that two weeks prior to her death, Denisha had been attacked in a car by a few people. The author described the perpetrators covering her mouth and beating her. It also described that Denisha was waiting to return back to her home station of Fort Stewart before making a formal report. The author went on to describe that just a few days before the post, Denisha was found unresponsive in her bed and that it was determined she died from, quote, suffocation by suicide, end quote. Of course, something didn't seem right about this Facebook post. So on August 12th, just three days after Denisha died, I shared the Facebook post and made a quick story about Denisha on social media. The day after I posted this video, the Army issued a press release stating the following. Quote, on August 9th, Private First Class Denisha Montgomery, assigned to the 139th Military Police Company, was found unresponsive in her barracks room on Lucius Clay Cassern in Wiesbaden, Germany. Emergency services were immediately called and the scene was secured until their arrival. She was pronounced dead on the scene. Private First Class Montgomery was deployed to Germany from Fort Stewart, Georgia, and was scheduled to return with her unit at the end of September. We are saddened by the loss of Private First Class Montgomery. Our thoughts are with her family and loved ones during this difficult time. The incident is currently under investigation by the U.S. Army Criminal Investigation Division. A complete and thorough investigation will be conducted. 
We take any and all accusations regarding this incident seriously and request everyone refrain from posting unsubstantiated information to social media platforms. All verified information will be distributed by U.S. Army, Europe, and Africa Public Affairs, end quote. Now, at the time of this press release, the video of Denisha crying with bruises had not been released to the public, and it's unclear to me if the Army knew of its existence. But when a News Nation Now newscast released the video as well as conducted their own interviews with Denisha's loved ones, the suicide narrative became even more suspicious. And then, on October 6, News Nation Now made another revelation. They obtained a report from the Army that conflicted with the initial report that Denisha committed suicide. The casualty report allegedly listed Denisha's category of death as pending. At this point, the Army appeared to be backpedaling, telling the outlet that it was the German authorities and not the Army that initially ruled the case a suicide. The Army released the following statement to News Nation, quote, The Army has not yet made a final determination of the cause or manner of Specialist Denisha Montgomery's death, end quote. They also said that they were conducting a comprehensive investigation which will remain open until all leads have been addressed and the medical examiner issues a final determination of the cause and manner of death, end quote. Spring has finally sprung and you deserve to put time and money back into your life. And HelloFresh is here to help you with that. With HelloFresh, you can skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking fun and affordable. HelloFresh is a meal kit service that comes with various meal options all packed neatly into these brown paper bags with all the ingredients you will need to have dinner ready in as little as 20 minutes. HelloFresh also includes these cute recipe cards that guide you step-by-step to prepare any of their 40 weekly recipes. But HelloFresh doesn't just stop at these meals. You can also round out your order with snacks and easy lunches. You can even order desserts and other pantry necessities. Now, check save money off your growing to-do list with the help of HelloFresh, because HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery store shopping and 25% cheaper than takeout. As a single mom to three young girls under seven, HelloFresh has been a lifesaver for me this year. About three times during the work week, my life is go, go, go. From the minute I pick up the girls from school to running to rehearsals and practices, having all of my meals pre-planned is amazing. And I'm so happy to not have any wasted food. And the girls love HelloFresh family dinner options, especially the flavorful turkey and bean chili. I'm so grateful for HelloFresh's ability to make my life just a little more simpler in these hectic times when my girls are still young. Try HelloFresh today to simplify your life. Visit HelloFresh.com slash MilitaryMama16 and use my code MilitaryMama16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. Visit HelloFresh.com slash MilitaryMama16 and use my code MilitaryMama16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. In putting together this episode, I spoke to Brooklyn and there were a few things that she revealed to me that I feel are important in retelling Denisha's story. First is the way that Denisha's room was set up. As I mentioned earlier, Denisha did have a roommate and basically it was like a dorm room. The two twin beds were in the same open bay room. The only thing separating the beds were two wall lockers. It's unclear who or how Denisha was even found. Someone initially told the family that Denisha was on her bed, but then the autopsy revealed that Denisha was actually found with her utility belt around her neck and that she was hanging from her wall locker, which means she would have been able to reach the floor of the locker and could have easily stood up at any moment. Second, and even odder, is that the utility belt did not slip from Denisha's neck. Since, just FYI, it's one of those cheap utility belts that you find at the exchange, like the one that you get at boot camp, like the one that costs like a dollar and some change. When I asked about Denisha's roommate, Brooklyn said that it was unclear where she was when Denisha died, but that she had heard from someone that the roommate had mentioned to them that she thought maybe she was even in the room listening to music on her side of the bed when Denisha died. Excuse me, what? Now, of course, that's all hearsay. But if that's true, it is really odd. One of the reports that Brooklyn referenced said that Denisha's staff sergeant or first sergeant was the one who found her. 
Denisha was supposed to work, but when she didn't show up, someone grabbed the master key and found Denisha inside of the room dead. Now, Brooklyn, however, was confused by this because she was under the impression that Denisha was on a four-day pass when she died. Well, on November 7th, three months after Denisha was found dead, Stars and Stripes reported that the Army has officially ruled Denisha's death as a suicide. I haven't seen much else about this case. I know that Denisha's family had a professional review the autopsy, and I know that they are trying to raise money for a second autopsy. But this case just doesn't add up. Brooke was waiting for Denisha to return home from Germany to have her big, joyous wedding day. But sadly, that day would never come. Because instead of meeting her sister at the airport with that big smile that I see Denisha wearing in most of the pictures that her family has shared, instead, Denisha returned home in a casket, draped by an American flag. After Denisha's death, Heather, Denisha's mom, gave Brooklyn a letter that she had been holding for Denisha to give to Brooklyn. Denisha was under the impression that her sister Brooklyn would get married while she was away, so she left her a wedding letter with her mom. Brooklyn knows one thing. If Denisha left her a long three-page letter for her wedding, if her sister was actually going to commit suicide, and listen, Denisha is long-winded, she wrote her sister a three-page letter, Brooklyn knows one thing. If Denisha was going to commit suicide, she would have at least left a suicide note. If not for her family at minimum, it would be for her husband and three kids. In this case, however, there was no note. And it begs the question, where was Denisha's roommate when this happened to Denisha? Who are the people who assaulted Denisha after the amusement park? But most importantly, what happened to Denisha Montgomery Smith? And was this really a suicide or was it just staged? Remember when I told you the story of the Marine serial killer George Torres and how he killed a girl in her dorms and shoved her into a weird position in her own footlocker and he went unsuspected for months? And it wasn't until he confessed to a jailhouse informant that that serial killer was stopped. Denisha's case feels a lot like that. But wait, to add insult to injury, if we ever want to discover the truth, it might be a little bit hard because all of the soldiers who were in Germany during the attack, they were provided strict rules to not talk about Denisha's death. The thing is that a few did break their silence behind closed doors, and they informed Brooke that they knew Denisha and she would not have killed herself. Brooklyn shared with me that every day since her sister died is a struggle for her. It's a struggle for her to put her military uniform on and show up to work. Brooklyn acknowledges that Denisha's death would be hard regardless. But the fact that the math doesn't add up in her sister's death, it leaves little room for proper grieving. After Denisha's death, Denisha's mom, Heather, and sister, Brooklyn, got tattoos together in remembrance of Denisha. It was Mama Bear's first tattoo. Brooklyn actually remembers getting her very first tattoo with Denisha and Jada. They got matching sister tattoos, which I think is very sweet. To help raise awareness of Denisha's case, Brooklyn has really been the face of the movement, and she has taken to TikTok. You can find her there under Brookie, and I'm going to actually link it in the show notes so you can find it directly. Many trolls comment on Brooklyn's TikToks that Brooklyn doesn't appear to be grieving, and Brooklyn acknowledges that she is very nervous on camera. And while you won't catch her crying on TikTok, I found that she choked up often as her and I discussed the memory of her sister. Just like Vanessa Guillen's family didn't give up on Vanessa, Denisha's family will not be sitting down quietly. And with that, I urge you to share this episode with the world. If you're on Facebook groups, share it there. Share, share, share. Follow Denisha's sister, Brooklyn. Let's elevate Denisha's voice until ABC's 2020 comes banging on Denisha's family's door to yell her story from the rooftops. Before I go, I wanted everyone to know that at the time of Denisha's death, her young sons were eight, four, and two years old. If you follow on social media, you can see the kids kissing a picture of Denisha on a tablet. While the four and two-year-old might not quite understand the magnitude of losing a mom, the eight-year-old definitely does. 
Recently, while in the presence of Brooke and her son, the eight-year-old looked at his cousin and simply said, quote, you're lucky you have a mommy, end quote. I wanted to share this story because it's a story that needs to be told. It gives off a lot of Lavina Johnson vibes. So let's continue to seek justice for Denisha. But if we haven't learned anything else, let's continue to do what Denisha did and leave a digital footprint. If you're having any type of issues with your coworkers, make sure that you're telling your family members. Make sure that you're logging all the information because we don't know what can happen to you. And if there is not a digital footprint, how are people going to prove that something was going on? If you want more of the same content that I bring you here, but in video format, make sure that you follow my brand spanking new YouTube channel by searching Mama Margo on YouTube. You can also find me on Instagram at Military Murder Podcast and on TikTok at Military Margo. This episode was researched in part by Haley Gray Research, executive produced by Nicole, Falcon 13, Alicia, Tina, and Jen. Our newest associate producers are Chenille, Tessa, Marco, Garcia, Kimberly Beebe, and Julia. Our newest assistant producers are Marlene, Jennifer O, Claudia with a K, Leslie, Stacy, Ninja Panda Bear, Tracy, Angela, Martha, Lacey, Santos, and Sun Saray. Thank you guys so much. The theme music was created by Ty Ops. Until next time, remember, you never really know what someone is capable of. So remain vigilant always. You have a fabulous week and I'll keep digging to bring you another military murder story next time. I was working on our podcast. I don't want to.